Hello everyone, and welcome in to the atrium. We're going to be back at visiting our art piece that we started last time in the library. Uh, I put down some notes while I was waiting for the stream to start, so let me go ahead and switch over. Okay. I just got to put myself down in place real quick. Try to get myself out of the way. Which me being so high up shouldn't be a problem. We changed the chat. Um, the chat box. Hey Cup, welcome in. Oh, I'm going to give you a nice shout out here in a second. As soon as I get myself situated, welcome in. Let me give you a nice friend shout out. I had a fun time on your stream today. I lurked while I did some animation. Can do stereo. You're now listening to me in stereo because I have a stereo microphone. Wow. I just normally down mix it into a mono channel um, so that you don't get this weird ASMR effect all the time when you're just watching me play games because it's not fair. It's not fair on your delicate ears. Well, you sound great. <laughs> I, uh, I'm relatively new to the cup oh, community new space friends oh thank you so much for that uh for the follow uh yay it's the starborn so you recently uh became a space friend on twitter i remember you i love your model by the way um that you posted if i wasn't so busy i would have done the uh your model and my art style challenge thing but i just got a lot on my plate right now but thank you for coming by and checking me out uh, let's see. I'm just having some unhealthy screen time in bed before sleeping. Well, uh, take care of yourself. You know, blue light can, uh, make the sleepiness harder. But, uh, thank you for stopping by anyway. It means a lot that you came by. And, uh, yeah, Alex says thank you. Well, no problem. I'm always happy to shout out my space friends. I gotta find my art pen. Let me start the music. Turn it down before that cord comes in and blasts your ear holes out. <laughs> I forget. I turned it up for the clips. Music. Today is provided by yours truly. Because I don't like copyright junk. By the way, my music is free to play on your streams and stuff. I don't believe in copyright striking people. I'm working on a script for a video series I've had in mind about comparing contrasting superpowers from different places. That'll be a very interesting uh, series. I saw you post about that. Um, and some of your friends saying you were also working on a game as well. So you've also got a lot on your plate, it sounds like. Yep, yep. What's your game about, if you don't mind me asking? If it's if it's secret, I understand, but I like to ask. Tis stressful. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Why can't I find my pen? There it is. Wow. 
And in true fashion, it takes up the whole screen. There we go. Now we can get to work. Let's see, I can tell you a bit about it? Sure, I'd love to hear it. Where can I find more of your music? It's nice. Um, you can find it anywhere that streams music, YouTube, Spotify, anywhere on the internet, basically. Um, and it's the same reason why I made my own too. Guarantee no copyright issues. Yeah, it's just so much easier. Um, by the way, your new Redeem and stuff and just your whole channel setup is magnificent. I could tell you put a lot of love into it. Uh, so here's the mines library. Uh, something I noticed is I had blurred the books to give it the, the background contrast to the focal point, And I didn't do it for the rest of the bushes. Shucks. Well, you deserve like all the praise. You're one talented kitty. Um, here we go. The game is about my character, Galax, going on a journey to stop a rogue mechborn, which is like a robotic starborn, with his friends. Journey through the shattered island you once called home and defeat the threats that have plagued upon the planet. Can you save Kevlar? I don't know. I hope I pronounced that correctly. You'll have to correct me. But, uh, that sounds like a real good time. I hope I get to see it someday. You did! Yay! I did a good thing. <laughs> okay, um... So we just gotta blur the rest of the background and foreground effects so that the effect actually comes through properly. And I'm gonna redo the dendrite clouds. Because you can't really tell they're dendrites. They just look weird. So, first things first. Cloud. I'm just gonna clear this layer. And then let's go find the dendrite brush we made. Here we go. And I'm gonna go in and increase the, the grain size. I'm in the wrong thing. Just need to play around with these for a bit till I get to where I want. Don't need it to be stabilized because they're cloudiness. Reduce the count too. Because the fact that there's so many dendrites really cloudies up. Uh, development for the game is snailed, unfortunately. Oh, is it? Um, I'm trying to help where I can, but I'm not good with pixel art. You are the artist, artist. <laughs> Thank you, Cup. Um, let's see. Uh, but. As far as the game development goes, uh, yeah, I get that. Developing the skills and talent you need takes time. There's... so I got the shape right. But I don't know where I changed the... size. That's dynamics, that's not gonna help. That's pressure.
Boy, it's been too long since I made my brush. Hey, Cryptic, welcome in. Cup is also here. I've got a really good friend squad. I got a new space friend. I got a couple returning ones. That's always nice. Let me give you a shout out. Boop. Pause so we can hear your your audio. Welcome in. You guys should also check out my friend Cryptic. And uh, Galax, if you stream, let me know and I'll give you a shout out. Get up, Mr. President! I don't know why. I never liked Raiden as a character. <laughs> Straight to the jaw. Turn that back down. There we go. Welcome in. I hope you have a good day. Cryptic's recent VR streams have been really good. Yeah, unfortunately I can't watch them. I have a sensory issues with first person and VR stuff. It uh, makes me sick, but I'm supporting in spirit. When I can, I turn you on and lurk in a corner without having to look at your screen. Let's see. Back to the brush. Oh, he uses a fixed third-person camera. Oh, in the Beat Saber and the VR chat stuff? Then I can actually go back. I'll go back and watch the VODs and I know I can actually watch you. Every time I see VR chat, I just automatically assume, oh, got to stay away. So I'll definitely be peeping at those. I guess this is what I'm going to have to live with. I've done something to this brush that I cannot seem to undo. I am going to... try to make it as clean as possible though. There's nothing in the grain. I don't know why I keep visiting it. Okay. To warn you, Beat sta uh, Saber still has flashing colors in case that's an issue. Uh, sometimes it is. It's typically bouncing or repetitive rotations. That's the problem. So, uh, we'll see. All right, that's much better. You can actually tell they're dendrites now. We're just going to kind of tappy tap. Until I kind of get them in a decent pattern that I like. Nice. Okay, let me move the cloud layer underneath the shading layers. Okay. I'm liking that much better. Let's go in and do our blur effects. Uh, I'm going to do the foreground bush first. I just got to... Here it is. We'll do a perspective blur. Whoop. Gotta merge these. And of course we want the main perspective to be in the center.
But I think like there's fine. That way that bush isn't just commanding so much attention. Because this is before, after. And now we need to do the same for the rest of the foliage in the background. I think I'm just going to merge all y'all. And then we'll do the same thing. I'm just going to get it to a place where it's not too bad. Okay, now we need to do the sky. Okay, and I believe I also had... Yeah, I need to blur this this edge here, too. So I need to go to the pathway. And make sure I'm on the right kind. And same with the platform. And I forgot to actually make the brick texture here. So let's go and redo that. Let's see. I think we'll just do stable brush. I don't think I'm going to go too detailed. We'll just kind of do a loose interpretation. And then on the top as well. We can actually leave the top flat. I think that would make sense. So I think that's a perfectly fine pattern. And I need to make sure I go back and do the inkwell, I think. I think that's a little too clear compared to the rest of its surrounding pieces. I'm also going to come down here on the path and I'm going to warp it to be underneath the brick a little better. go to the inkwell here and the papers. I'll just go ahead and merge those down to one layer. And we'll just blur them slightly. Okay, now our edges match the piece much better. All right, I'm going to do the, the flippy flip. See if I can spot anything new. Whip. 
as usual, the whole thing's on a walk. And I can see the grass has some problems behind those bushes. Remember to flip your art, kids. I need to just go in and paint that. Yoink! Okay, and let me, um, I think the sky should be fine, but I need to grab everything else and try to unwonk it. If that did it. Okay. Oh, do another flip. I need to go ahead and do an adjustment. This side is a little too up there. the bookcase. So let's do the bookcase. And then I'll adjust the foliage too. And I think I need to do a warp on this corner and just bring it like way down. A little more. Okay. And maybe let's get this foliage to stretch down. Where's this extra foliage at? Okay, it's on this layer. I'm going to select and pull that down. I need to go back to foliage layer because we've got a bit of white line over here. So there. Goodness. Not what I wanted to do. Thank you. That's what I wanted to do. Then look at the sky. Pull it down. I need to come back to this tree. Pull them down a bit more. I need to edit the bookshelf again. I 
because I stretched this corner out of the perspective I had where they were tilting this way. Okay, and then I'm going to stretch it. Let's do a warp. Kind of a warp stretch because I don't want to uncenter the piece. for this piece. So right now we've got the two pieces. We've got the matriarch and the library. But I'm not dead set on this being the final iteration of this library piece. Uh it's perfectly passable. It looks good. But compared to this one, this one seems so uninteresting. So maybe I need to thumbnail out a couple more compositions for this. And something I noticed for this one, I went through several changes from the original idea and landed on this one because comp compositionally it looks best. But this is pretty original to the first thumbnail, so I might need to be letting go of some ideas and uh, reforming this whole setup. But we'll definitely keep it around. If not, at least for comparison's sake. Let me get out of here. Please! Please let me get out of here! Thank you. Okay, and I noticed these... Did I have this one title? I gotta look at my old, my old note. Give me a second. It was just library, so we do mine's library. So now I can make a choice. I can move on to a new piece or redo the mine's library and do some thumbnails and stuff for it. Let me see. Let me see the order. I'll show you guys the the original thumbnail sheet I had here in a minute. But let me make sure I have these named in an order so I know what I'm working with. Because these are sketches from like forever ago, like over a decade ago. <laughs> so I need to to do some reorganizing. So this one. Okay, this is the one with the dragons in it. So that one was called Dragon Master. And these have a specific order to them to describe the story going on. So I need to name them so I can order them. Okay, this one is the one with Skeleton Lady in it. Have a good lurk, Cryptic. I hope you have a good rest and everything. I know it's getting late over there, but thank you for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy your lurk. Let's see. This is the one with Skeleton Lady. I just named that one Reaper. This is Prophet.
this one, it took me a minute to figure out what was going on, but after looking at the originals, I finally remembered which one it was. I just gotta figure out what I called it. This one must have been an additional transition piece. So we'll come back to it. This one was Betrayal. I'll go through and show you guys and talk about these more in depth in a second. This one's Silence. Evil. And this one's Prophet's Rebirth. Temptation. And I may move the the brushes out of here so we have a clearer folder. Now this is one of those. I have no idea what it was. Okay, here we go. Repression. Fun stuff. Okay, I also notice I'm missing a couple. There's a couple that aren't in here. So we'll go in order. So... First it was the Matriarch. Then it was the Reaper. Then the Library. Then... Uh... Dragon Master? And then Prophet. And then there's one. This one was called Forbidden Door. after profit. And there's one called The Unknown. Hey, it's the last brain cell. This is my brain right now.
Unknown was silent. Okay, this one was called Night. I didn't do a thumbnail for it, but I had it down on the list. And before Night was Power Door. one called Just a Dragon. And then It and Ego. And I did make one for this, but it's like in Photoshop on my old computer. So I'll just have to go off of um, off of my memory of what I had down for it. And then we had one after that titled Sending. And then depression. Where did that one go? Temptation and rebirth. Okay, so we have all of them now. They're all in order. And there's basically different categories these are broken up into, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to... I'll do that later. Let's go into Reaper, and I'm going to pull up... Reference... to do a little Heidi thing so that you guys don't see the stuff I'm working on. Wrong one. That one. Okay. So I'm going to uh, enlarge this. And we're going to talk about it for a second. This is the original the original thumbnails, I guess you can say. And they are about the size of a thumb. They're tiny. Um, so you can see I have several transitionary scenes, one of which doesn't make it in to the final lineup. And that's Child and Garden, which is this first one here. Uh, because story-wise, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, Matriarch is going to be the first one. And I can do Child and Garden after Matriarch, but I don't think it adds anything to the series. Jixoy, welcome in. It's good to see you. Let me give you a shout out too. Yeah, pause over there, turn up my audio here. I hope your day's been going great. Here we go. 
Loving the new chat box? I can't take credit for it. Uh, I'll... All right, are you ready? Okay, it's time. He went Super Saiyan. <laughs> that was a powerful moment. Uh, the reveal. Your power levels have never been so high. Well, Pizza Tower. I, I beg that the Pizza Tower power levels you had going on were even stronger than the Super Saiyan. The first time I was Super Saiyan, yes. Uh, let me come over here real quick. I need to look up who the chat box is from so that people in the future can go get it for themselves. Because... I gave up. I tried coding for a bit. It wasn't working out and I got there's a free one someone else made. So that's good news for everyone out there. That's not good at coding at first. Um, OK, so uh, it's by Coca C-O-C-A-8 um, double H and uh, for stream elements. So they have a free stream elements chat set up that's already pre-coded for you. And it's generally really great. You still have to do a little coding to fix the, uh, to fix the fact that the, the text will not auto um, change. So it, like it, Originally, before it would run off the box, so you have to do a little bit of coding to get it to stay within the box bounds. But it's one little line that just tells it, "Hey, stay in the box," and you can find that um, if you just look up uh, Coca's stream chat on YouTube in the top comments. It, the person has already typed it for you. You just literally have to paste it in to the place they tell you to paste it in at. So it's not it's not bad at all. But it is freaking adorable. So thank goodness for Coca. Uh, I wish I was Super Saiyan when I beat the final boss, but I made a mistake. <laughs> well, uh, you had other things on your mind, other extraneous things that were happening. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too upset about it. Oh, by the way, Jexoy, I think it was you who asked uh, who said you needed to figure out how to get YouTube uh, to automatically port your Twitch videos. Um, and I figured out um, a way to send your Twitch videos directly to YouTube uh, this weekend, if you were still ne needing to know how to do that. But knowing you, you might have already figured it out. Might have already had some help. Okay, so these aren't in order. Uh, these are just the thumbnails as the ideas came to me. And I don't have it on the page because I didn't need it for reference purposes, but I have a chronological list of everything in the place it needs to go and the title. And so the only thing is a couple of these I had wrote down the name for, but I didn't do thumbnails for. So that's why some of these are blank right now. I did do one for Ed and Ego, but it was an old, old Photoshop file from like 2015. So I don't know if I would ever be able to find it, being the destructive artist that I am. Let's go ahead. We'll um, just come over here to do Reaper. Because I forgot this one was before Library. And I may go ahead and change that order. No, Reaper would be right after. Because everything is um, ordered 
by event in Ham's psychological journey as a person. So they are based on life events and stuff. So Reaper would definitely be after Matriarch. So let me make sure I'm not painting on the original sketch layer. And we'll do our newest one above it. Just go ahead and get our wild brush. And I'm going to turn down this old layer. And I think I'm going to shrink it. because I don't think I'm going to keep this original composition. Like I said, these were made like 13 years ago. So I've learned a lot more from composition than I originally had it. And I think that's my problem with the library scene is it is almost exactly the same as the original composition from all that time ago and so it's a very simple composition and I don't think it's as intriguing as the matriarch rewrite because this is originally what the matriarch one was going to look like she was going to be standing at a table crafting wonders but I think I liked it better where we just streamlined it to her giving the magic airplane uh, because she's still crafting a wonder and she's still giving it to the child uh, so we may go back and redo the thumbnails for the library. So I remember the idea I had for this one. So I kind of like the setup. We just need to change a few things about the perspective, I think, and the placement of things. So we'll have our skeleton lady be at the center, and I'm going to have to shrink us this. This is too big. So we'll have her like here. about and I think maybe we should have her hand on one of the headstones here And then maybe a hand on her skirt here. I need to make that arm shorter. child care about and she's having like a conversation to the lady so you kind of need to face the back of her head again I think I need to move her just a little bit away from this headstone. I say as I drag most of the headstone with her. Let's 
So maybe like here. And I think she can be showing off the magic airplane to the skeleton lady. Okay, and then I had some different types of headstones in the background. So let's see. Trying to get those in. This one's going to be kind of more behind the skeleton lady. This is not how cemeteries are laid out at all, but compositionally, it would be more appealing. And it's in it's in a mind, so things aren't always recreated perfectly in a human brain, anyway. So I guess it would make a little sense for things to be a little out of place to suit the narrative better. And then we had one of these monuments, it looks like. The reason why, um, so each piece is correlated to Ham's life. So the first one is a direct correlation to her maternal figure. The library is just connected to her love of books and fantasy and fiction. But the Reaper is because Ham's family used to run a business where they sold uh, headstones to people. So after the death of a person in this society uh, that she grew up in, they would arrange for funeral and such, and then go to a place like Ham's family business to uh, get the, the stone commemorating their life. And it is a Western society, so they typically buried their their dead whole without cremation. Uh, so the headstones were designed with that in mind. Um, so that's why this is so close into the, the narrative. And it's not going to be portrayed as something scary. It's just a matter of fact kind of thing that there was always this kind of close relationship with death. I think we'll do that. And then maybe we'll do some like vague geometric shapes back here to denote more stones. But always in these first ones is going to... If they're in a view like this, it's going to be with the presence of the wall in the background. We need to get that. Kind of this curved wall here. Maybe I need to put that further. I need to figure out the horizon line better. Let's drop this down. The horizon line is about here. And for those of you who don't usually think about art composition, the horizon line is like the central vanishing point of a piece. 
it's where the horizon would be. Well, so you need to build your world kind of around it in order for it to be visually correct. So the wall would be like here. I think we'll have like bushes and some trees to fill in the rest of the space. The original. We're gonna lower the opacity on the redesign. And I'm gonna think about this because I don't want to get stuck in the same situation where I hate the composition. I think I want to make the skeleton lady bigger. Because she's supposed to be like huge. She's supposed to be this towering figure. So let me go back here. She's like massive. So I need to draw her a little more hunched then. Let's reset this, and then what we'll do is we'll just kind of yoink us her top bit. Make her kind of taller here. Then we'll kind of have her more bent at the waist. Let me go back and erase her, her arms. We'll still have a hand resting here, one on her skirt. And we'll have her skirt kind of flowing around. Okay. I can get rid of this now. to the original plan, lowering this opacity, and then starting to figure things out a little better. I think I'm still going to do a n another rough pass, and then we'll, before we do the final uh, lines. I'm going to turn down my first size a little. I guess we should start with the, the girl. I want a little bit of the nose and face in there. But of course I need to proportion that properly. I 
I need to set that back to uniform. The shoulder is going to be kind of hunched because she's leaning on it. Because the dress is too big, the arms are still scrunched. With a hand here. Thumb is on the other side, so we don't have to worry about that. This is just going to be pinky and fingers. And palm. And then with this arm, the fabric's going to kind of be squanched here. It's printed. here in the lap. And I gotta figure out how I want this hand to sit. I'm gonna make a new layer for hand ideas. Since the plane kind of floats on its own, Maybe we, we could have something like this, where she's just kind of holding it out, and then the plane is floating above it. I think that would be the best case. That's too, too long. seen too much of the other fingers. So something like this. I need to distort, squirt it a little bit. And we'll have airplane kind of floating in the palm get her legs here her feet same here And I may need to redo that perspective. way less of that foot. I think about there, maybe even less. Yeah, because she's facing nearly completely away. I feel like I did draw her in a walk, so let me... Let me do a flip. Yeah, I did. I think more like this. Yeah. And then I just need to make sure that this arm is long enough. It needs to come down a bit more.
Okay, I'm gonna do a new layer. Let's do that for this headstone here. These are called wing backs. And they're shaped like this. They typically have a bit of a base to them. Be like this. And I need to move it more here, I believe, would be the best place. That way her feet are more on the ground and not on like floating in air on stone. I need to make sure the pedestal comes out a bit more. That's more like that. And then let's do Skeleton Lady next. So she's looking down. So. And I want her head to kind of be tilted a little. for kind of a gaunt face. So this is going to be nose line. This is going to be eye line. So I need to keep that in mind. shape in here that I like. I'm just gonna kind of shade in some places for the eyes and stuff. She will have a little smile. again, because Ham grew up around the concept of death from a very young age, the concept of death is not a very scary subject uh, for her to think about. It's just a part of existence that always is. Okay. Now, in the original, she had, like, a hair bun, but... Recently, the, I think we should change the design to match more uh, modern thoughts of death. And what I mean by that, by ham standards, everyone else has their own. Uh, let's get the body and stuff in before we decide the details. So because she's looking down, her head's... you're not really going to see her neck. Just trying to get in the shape perspective here. Okay. 
and because of the perspective, that hand over there is going to be a little, a little bigger. in here. And then the skirt. Shape here. Maybe even peeping over here a little. Quick curve back inward. just going to go through and design the dress out a little. I think it will be something that had a collar. Um, and now we can get into the headdress design. I need to make sure that's aligned. The base. And I'm going to erase this and get more Yeah, needs to come in quite a bit. Right now, the shape composition is drawing me towards her hands. So I think I'm gonna raise the child a bit more. Yeah. That way, the, the airplane is kind of like the central point of this piece. Okay, let me shut off these and do a flip check on the skeleton lady. She's actually not bad. Hey, and let's just get general shape. This is the appropriate wall height. And I think I need to Whenever I put in her leg shape, and this will make sense once I'm coloring her a bit more. Let's get a new layer. This is going to be her hip area. Sour, please? I don't know what that means. I need help. Understanding. I think we'll have 
Her legs. Look at your stream. I don't understand what's going on. Oh, oh, okay, okay. okay. It's a, it's an emo. <laughs> Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, I reach out on mobile whenever I'm down on my iPad, so I know what's going on. And a lot of the times, it does not translate over the, uh, the emotes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's, that's why I'm, I was so confused. I was like, I don't understand. I need to make a note to look up to, to see what's going on on the stream. <laughs> Uh, BTTB emotes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I get it now. Um... How do I do, like, a vanishing perspective leg? It'd be more like this. You wouldn't be able to see it behind the child. Should I teach you about them? Yes, please do. Because I have no idea what those are. Let me get... I need to make sure I'm... on a separate layer. So... This is going to be a long message. I could just have her legs vanishing like that, but that would look a, a little odd, I think. Her other hip is going to be behind this hand here. There's a free browser plugin that most Twitch users have and it allows for you to use more emotes for your streams without needing to be affiliate. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to look that up. So her legs will be like that. I'll go ahead and merge down. And I think I need to merge these two shapes together a little better. There's something around 50 slots for them, and I used all of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of emotes. Yeah, I'll definitely have to look into it, because I have emotes made. They're over on the Discord. So, it'll just be fun. To actually be able to use them. Okay, uh, I'm gonna come back here to the background layers. These are just gonna be some general plants, like in the library. Make sure some of them are kind of curved back inward. You can use your own emotes, but I actually still recommend you get affiliate so that your emotes are exclusively to your stream. Definitely, that's what I'm trying to get, if you notice our goal up there. Someday, someday we'll be a professional. But until then, I'm just happy to hang out with you guys. Let's go ahead and erase. Back some of these. 
So like, for example, I have a hug emote that is free for anyone to use. Okay, gotcha. So basically, I had a set that we're going to be just in the the free version, I guess you can say, of the, the emotes on the channel. So I would use those and uh, save the rest for whenever whenever we do get to reach that uh, that affiliate goal. So with BTTV, you can use it for your stream too. Neato Burrito. I'm definitely going to check it out. Because the name of the game right now is uh, Channel Improvements. Let's get some general headstone shapes in here. It's this emote, by the way. Yes, that one. That very adorable hugging emote. Did, um, correct me if I'm wrong, did Pixie do that one or did you do that one? Let's get some tree foliage over there. She did! I knew it! <laughs> we'll have a short one over here. And those ones typically just do this. And we'll get that shape there. And I think we're going to do like a bush and then three. And then maybe a tree back here, something back here, curving back inward to the, the big skeleton lady. Her headdress cloth needs to come back under here to connect to the skirt. position. Let me turn off the original and let's do a whole canvas flippy so we can see this reference. So we can see our issues. So definitely everything's on a walk per usual. Oh, I need to distort. To start, I unselected the wrong layer. I need to straighten everything out a little bit. And there's a lot of existing space in this bottom part that um, I think I need to add something to make up for it. trying to consciously flip my art early so it's not such a problem. Let's also get the grid in. So I can see a little better.
So I think things are on the level here. I'm going to turn the guide back off. I need to come over here. Let's do some perspective on this headstone here. I don't think we want to be seeing the top of it. Right now, if our focal point is here, let me get a different color line to illustrate this. If the focal point is here, then we should probably align the perspective to it. Okay, and so we want to be seeing the back side of this headstone, but we may be seeing a little bit of the side here. And so we also need to change the perspective of the pedestal a little too, to suit it. It looks so clean. Thank you. So I'm going to lower this down. We'll go back to our red color. Go back to the headstone. For this is simple. We'll just do a line here. And this would be out this way a little bit, a little bit down. Okay, this one needs to go a little bit back, like such. So that would be the perspective of that corner. And with that in mind, we need to kind of align the perspective here. You'd just be seeing really just a sliver of the end here. I re should really focus on upgrading too. Gotta be strong. Um, wow, yeah, uh, I'll always be excited for whatever you choose to do. It's always exciting to see all the places my friends get to go and grow. Okay, so especially now that we've straightened out the piece, there's this glaring empty spot here. So we need to kind of figure out what we want to do with it. I can move the whole piece down. And do more sky, but it still leaves quite the bit of empty space there. some maybe a, a ring of grave daisies for those of you who haven't hung out in cemeteries too frequently because you know why would you there's this kind of daisy that usually grows there uh, in this particular region you could also add flowers or something meaningful to the deceased person that's true but typically in uh, at least in a setup like this for a headstone, the way they would add flowers is the pedestal would be broadened and there would be a flower vase to the side of the headstone. Um, that and this child is literally sitting on this grave. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's disrespectful. Um, but sometimes... Sometimes you're right. Sometimes people wouldn't be able to spring for the the, the vase. So we can put like a okay here. Yeah, I was making sure I was on my own layer. Like here. Or um, 
some people would put things in tribute. I know on Ham's uh, grandfather's stone, she put a yellow rock with red polka dots on it and googly eyes because he was a fan of pet rocks and making his wife miserable with his color choices. Uh, but she put that like right here on the pedestal. Typically, you don't want to leave things on the grave um, like this, just on the dirt, because um, it causes problems for the groundskeepers. Uh, I mean, it still happens. People still do it, but it'll get blown away typically or the groundskeepers are going to have to move it. So we could put flowers there. Maybe if we flip them like this. We need a proper perspective on them. I don't know. That would make their stems kind of the focal point. For my aunt and grandpa, we added some solar-powered lights to brighten things up. Yes. I've seen those. They're like... These little lights, and sometimes they kind of look like butterflies or birds or... Whatever. Got the little tiny solar panel on them. I think maybe we should go with the okay look because it's it's a little cliche I don't know it's what people expect I guess um so we can do a little bouquet here we're gonna come here and erase back this stone line Like they're recently deceased or someone just came to visit. True. And if this is in a child's brain, even though Pam grew up in cemeteries a lot, there may still have been this mentality of movie cliches bleeding into the the brain processes. So I think okay would be good. I think I'm gonna make it bigger. I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that composition. I actually feel super comfortable uh, uncomfortable around cemeteries. I would say that a lot of people do. I don't think it's a place a lot of people feel comfortable in unless it's an environment you've been raised in. Like uh, I think you missed the part where I said Ham's family used to sell headstones. So they would uh, a person would come to the office, they'd choose the stone, they'd choose a design, and let us know the the information that goes on them. Speaking of which, we need to design some headstone designs to go on here. But basically, uh, after that point, it was etched, and then the... Uh, the company would go out to the cemetery and put the the stone on the gravesite. Yeah, I can see how people can get used to seeing it all the time like that. Yeah, it was it was literally from the time Ham was born, she was in the family business. So literally from infancy all the way up until the closing, uh, 
get stones, death, uh, cemeteries. It's just, it was just a part of life. It was never this terrifying, uncomfortable feeling because it was just something that everyone, you know, had to deal with. I'm gonna come down here real quick and we're gonna design a layout for these headstones. Uh, these ones can remain indescript. These ones back here. They could just be shapes. And I think here for this one too. But this one being the focal point stone, it would be really weird for it to not be decorated. Uh, which is weird, because I find haunting, uh, haunted grave levels to be a fun aesthetic. <laughs> well, it's different when it's in a, uh, when it's in a controllable media, right? In the real world, you can't control it. So the thought of a haunted cemetery in real life is far scarier than a haunted cemetery in fiction. Because you have some level of control over the outcome of that in your mind. And, uh... So, very true. Yeah, it all comes down to, uh, you know, your your level of control over the situation, I think. Let's see. This could be, usually wingbacks are for couples. So let's do... like the two black square look. You know, you're growing ever so closer to 50. I am really close. I uh, I got really lucky. Super excited for that. Thank you. I got really lucky um, and um, a, a fellow extra terrestrial a uh, friend over on Twitter came by today and uh, followed me as well. So that was really nice of them to come by. And then uh, Lucky followed me the other day after we raided. Uh, so that was uh, amazing. And a couple days ago, a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, uh, our friend Revotion uh, shouted us out and that gave us a couple more as well. Definitely got to do my part and shout you out more. You already do so much. You're like, one of the most supportive people around here. Uh, let's see. A common motif was roses. So maybe we'll do the... the rose motif. In between. And we need to bring this up a little more. So it'll be something like this. We won't bother filling in the name plaques. We'll just kind of indicate the etching. But that's it. And of course it's on a walk, because everything I do is on a walk. There we go. And it is going to be a little more over this way, because... We're seeing in the perspective the side of this stone. So probably hereabouts. Oh yeah, Lucky is a friend of mine from a different group of streamer friends. They're super nice. They are. I super enjoy them. Um and it was so funny whenever I was starting that raid and you're like I know them and then we got there and you're like this wasn't my idea I swear for the first time <laughs> someone else just wanted to to go over to you
Okay, I think we're ready for the fine line details. I'm gonna merge it down. I'm gonna undo that merge. Let's do one less flip. Flip. Yep, we're looking good. Okay. Now we do the mergey. Turn it down. And we can start the fine line work. I'm gonna do... Uh, let's see. And they were sounded genuinely shocked that it wasn't you. I know, you're, <laughs> you're usually the culprit, so they're like, wow! I'm gonna do a hydrate real quick. I'm thirsty. And I need to do a stretch for my friend. Ugh, that felt nice. Okay. I also, um, just so you know, I also have a, a care command. So it's exclamation point care, and it will do both the hydrate and the stretch at the same time, so you don't have to do both if you don't want to. You just do the, the care if you want to get a two-for-one deal. Hair! I ain't got nothing for that! No! Hair! <laughs> there we go. Alright, I'll do, I'll do another set.
I I preemptive preemptive re return. <laughs> Jack's always said he couldn't hear me, and I wonder was I just muted for that entire thing? For the entire thing I've been talking. Wow. Okay. Let me. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna come back here so I can give you the proper recap again. Rip. Rip. Okay. So I was I was talking the entire time to myself, but here is our our piece for now. We were able to uh, get some of the final line work in. I was just chilling with the music and I thought you were in complete focus mode. I was not. I was chattering the whole time. Uh, so uh, we got in some perspective guidelines for her arm here coming to the stone. Uh, and we will finish the line work next time. But we also finished work on the Mines Library piece, which again, I may revisit to see if I can create a more exciting uh, composition. But uh, for now, this is a perfectly fine uh, piece. So now, let me give you a proper outro. Of course I would. Proper outro, let's go! <laughs> so, now that you can hear me, I just want to thank everyone for coming by today. Thank you for hanging out with me and uh, just generally relaxing, having a nice chill time. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow playing some Cozy Grove and Littlewood. And that was it for today. For real this time. It's always a good time being here. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. I enjoy having you. So, until next time, have fun, space friends. <laughs>